Welcome back. So we had just set up the backbone of our power-up system and created the invincibility power-up, and now we're going to move on to the guns. So let's head back to the step event, because that's where we were creating the guns. And so over here in the create bullet script. So at the moment in the script, we had set up three different arguments. So the direction, speed, and the faction. What I'm going to do is actually add another argument to this so that we can specify what guns to create. I might actually make this a an optional argument so that if we leave it like this, it's just going to use the default one gun. But if we do this, then it's going to specify a type of gun. So this way we can kind of leave all of the enemy's code intact while being able to change our own. So let's head over here and let's add our new argument. So this will be gun type. And the way that we can make this an optional argument is we can say, so I'm going to declare gun type. By default, I'm going to set that to minus one because we know minus one is what guns will be set to if we don't have any power up. So that's going to be the kind of default for just one. If we have supplied an argument for gun type, then we're going to overwrite this with the argument that has been input into the script. So we just have to check if argument count, so that's the number of arguments that we have passed in, is greater than three. So more than three is four, so we've specified a gun type. Then we just set this to argument three, which is technically the fourth argument, of course. Don't get confused. Remember that it starts at zero. All right, great. So now we are able to pass this in. And I might actually, just to make it crystal clear that this is optional, just put a little star here so that when it comes up in this, we can see it's kind of, it's an optional argument. All right. So now we're going to change how this is working because at the moment it's just creating one gun. So let's just give ourselves some space. We're going to have to split up a lot of this because we want to, again, avoid a lot of repeated code. We know that regardless of the bullets, we want to be setting all of them to the appropriate colors. So we might have to generalize some of this and some of this setup. So right here is choose gun type. I'm going to do this in a big switch statement. So we're going to switch the gun type. And let's put all of our cases here. So we know, so what we can do is use the enumerator now as the cases. So power ups dot two bullets, three bullets, four, star, and laser. And of course, actually, we need a final argument down here for default. So this will be if we haven't kind of specified a gun type, if it's minus one. So we could actually put case minus one, but it makes sense to put this as the default. And actually, we can just grab all of the original code we had and put that there. So I'm going to move these two into the default. Now, if you think about it, we kind of want to be doing a lot of this stuff, all of this stuff in all of them. It's just the number of times that we're doing it is going to be different. I think the only thing that might change is for the laser. I'm going to be using a different sound effect. So remember, we imported a new sound, the laser sound. And just because the laser is going to be quite a different object, it's not going to be a bullet that just flies at enemies. It's kind of going to be a line that can blow up anything in its path. I'm going to be using a totally different object for that. But for the rest of them that are using bullets, this code is going to be repeating a lot. And the other changes I want to make is just if I'm shooting two bullets or three, four and star, I'm going to be changing how it's kind of offset and the direction that it's heading. So we need to give space for that too. So what I'm going to do actually first is just take all of this code and I'm going to instead put it into a script because we're going to be repeating it a lot. So let's make a new script and we're going to call this initialize 
bullet. And this is kind of just going to be the handover of all of these variables. And so I'm going to paste that in here. Let's give it a heading. And the arguments that we're going to pass into this are actually going to be the same as the bullets. So all of these, except for the gun type. So I'm just going to copy all of this, come back here, paste it in. And now all of these should be handed over in the same way. Um, but we can get rid of gun type. Just like that. Uh, but we will also need the instance of the bullet. So we actually do need to add an argument. So that we can access it here. All right, great. So now whenever we uh, run initialize bullet, it's going to run all of this stuff. And that way, if we ever change how we're initializing the bullet, if, if it needs more factors or anything, we just have to change this script. So let's come back to create bullet. We actually don't need this anymore because it's handled in that other script. We do need these arguments so that we can pass it in down here. So I'm going to run initialize bullet and let's pass in direction, speed, faction, and the instance itself, which we're getting right here, the ID for the instance when we create it. All right, great. So now when we kind of reuse this, it's going to be a lot easier and the code is going to be a bit less clogged up. So let's come up to two bullets and think about how we're going to do this. So we kind of need to do this two times right here. And we are going to be offsetting X and Y a little bit. I don't want them both coming out of the player at the exact same spot because it wouldn't even look like two bullets then. We're just going to kind of relative to where the player is facing, offset it left and right of the ship. And it's not going to be as simple as just kind of plussing, you know, a few numbers like this. So minus four, plus four, because the player is going to be facing different angles and we still want it to offset relative to that direction. So I'm going to be using some vector maths and the function that we're going to be using is called length direction. And let me just middle click on this. So we know that if the player, for example, is facing this way, the angle that we want the bullets to go in is kind of off here. So it's kind of plus 90 and minus 90 from where the player is facing. And then to get the actual X and Y position of where that should be, this function is going to give us the exact value for X and Y that the bullet needs to go in. We just have to tell it a length. So like how far down this vector do we want it to put the bullet and then just the direction. And we already know the direction because it's going to be minus 90 for that one and plus 90 for the other bullet. So now just to generalize how far uh, up and down the player it's going to go, I'm going to make a new variable called separation and we'll set that equal to 12, it doesn't really matter. This is an arbitrary number. You can pick a different one, but I think this looks pretty good. And that is the length from the player that uh, the bullets will be offset. So instead of four, we're going to use this argument. So we're going to go separation. And now, like I said, we want whatever direction the player is facing in. So whatever uh, argument has passed in here. And of course, this will be general so that other ships will be doing the same thing. It should work for the enemies and everything. And we just have to plus 90. So this one will be our plus 90 one. And we'll do the same for the Y. And I'm going to copy this and paste it here. And we just have to say minus 90 now. All right, great. Now, the way I'm going to do the three bullets is actually the exact same as the two bullets. I'm just going to be creating a few more of them. So I want this code to run. And I just want it to shoot one in the middle as normal. So I want it to do all of this stuff, but just create one as normal, like it's kind of doing in the default. So I'm going to copy this, put that in here, and I'm actually going to change the order of that so that this case is going to be running this one's code. So this is kind of a, a sneaky way to do it. We can uh, reuse the code this way. We don't have to be copy and pasting all of this into here. So I'm not going to put the audio 
play in this one because it's already going to be playing it with two bullets. But like I said, if you don't put a break in the cases, it's going to go ahead and run the next case as well. So we've already got the three bullets and the two bullets set up. Now might be a good time to test those. So I'm going to go over to our power up and I'm going to change that to two bullets. And I'm going to hit play and just see if that works. Great. And you can see the uh, overlay of the two guns is also working because we had already set that up. And we'll do the three bullets now. Cool, so the three bullets are working as well. Awesome. So let's head back to the game. Ah, oh, no, let's head back to the ship and the create bullet, middle click on this, and let's take care of the other cases. So, okay, for the four bullets and the star bullets, I'm gonna do these a bit differently. They're not going to be coming off in the same direction as the ship. They're going to be heading out in all different directions. So uh, four bullets ahead, behind, out to the left and out to the right, relative to whatever the player's current angle is. And we're gonna do it in a slightly different way than how we did these. We're going to be using a repeat loop instead because the difference between the angles for all of these will be constant. They'll be 90 degrees apart all the time. And for the star bullets, they'll be 45 degrees apart. Because of that, I can kind of just keep adding 45 as I'm creating them to get the bullets to be heading in the right directions. But let's actually uh, start doing it so that it makes sense. I'm just going to copy this over to here. We do still want it to be making the zap sound for this. I might make the separation a little bit less for these. And I'm also gonna just declare another temporary variable that we're gonna use. This is going to be changed every time we loop. So for this one, we're going to be looping four times because we wanna be creating four bullets. So we will be running this four times. But each time I want to be changing direction a little bit. So we're going to be setting bullet angle equal to whatever the direction is. And then we're going to be adding some value times 90, right? So it's going to be adding 90 every time so that it goes all around the ship. So we can actually create this variable I. So we can start at zero. So the first one will be adding nothing to the current direction. So that one will be just wherever the player is facing. And then the next three will add 90, which is exactly what we want. We just have to make sure that I is incrementing every time. So we could have actually used a for loop for this as well. It would kind of be doing the same thing. Okay, great. So now this is going to be adding to it. We just have to be using this in place of direction. And here as well. And in that one. All right. And if you want, maybe we should just do these over multiple lines so that we can see it. Okay, great. So now actually this code can be reused in the star bullets. We're just going to be changing how many times we're repeating. And of course the angle that we're changing by. Oh, and we forgot we want to be getting rid of this because we have perfectly calculated the angle. So it should be, like I said, adding zero the first time, 90, 180, 270, creating all of those bullets. Okay. Let's copy that. And I'm going to put it here as well. And let's change this to be eight. And 45. And just get rid of that extra break. Make sure that we don't have any mistakes. Make sure that you have breaks after all of your cases. But that should be all set up except for the lasers. But we'll do that in a moment. Let's go and test that those two worked. So let's head over to power ups and let's do four bullets first. There you go. So it's going out in all directions. Now let's test star. Awesome. Okay. All right, so now all that's left to do is make the laser bullets, which we'll do over in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching, I'll see you there.